Hi, I'm David Baldacci, the author of the Hour of Wishes R2 series. Crime noir can be defined many ways. Um, typically, you have a private eye. He's a lone wolf, an outsider looking inside. He's the perfect narrator for the story. You have his take and what he's seen. They don't have to drink, but it certainly helps. And then you have Hollywood in the 1940s and 1950s, the golden era. But along with that golden era and all the fabulous stars and the homes and the mansions and the cars and the drinking and the partying and the pulp fiction and all the magazines covering all the actors, you have the mob, a lot of crime, police corruption at a high, high level. All that coming together with all this fame, glamour, and money. And that just makes a great melting pot for a crime war. And you have this lone wolf, private eye, who gets called in a case that somehow is tangentially connected to all of these elements. And he has to work his way through methodically, all of it, until the end. And hopefully he stays alive at the end and either rescues his client or figures out the mystery. It's all very compelling story material. And it's one reason why I wanted to set on Wishes Archer's Adventures in the 40s and 50s, because it was a great time of transition in this country. People were post-World War II, they wanted to pack up and move and go to another place and have a better life. But along with all of that comes a lot of bad elements. And you see all of that in Crime and War and certainly in the Aloysius Archer series. Part of it also comes to who do you trust? In a lot of the Crime and War novels, including mine, the private investigator, this guy, you know, in the sort of the uh, trench coat and the fedora held down a little bit over his eyes, pounding the pavements, asking questions, getting into trouble, trying to find the truth. He is sort of like the moral compass of the entire story. He's the one person who has a moral center and wants to do the right thing. And I find that really fascinating. You have an outsider looking in this really glamorous world, and he's the one true sort of dividing light in all of this, trying to make sense of it and trying to have a sense of justice come to the people in that story. To have a long career in writing takes many things, discipline, a pure love of storytelling, a desire to use words as your tools, and an instinct to constantly sort of reinvent yourself, getting out of your comfort zone and reaching new territory. The Archery series allowed me to do all of that and more. I am writing in a time period in which I was not even born, the 1940s and 1950s. I had to research and learn a lot about those that era uh, in order to write a compelling story about it. Uh, I had to research a lot of things, read a lot of books, talk to people, just look at a lot of different things. And I love that because I'm a history student, I'm a history buff, I love that, so that was right in my wheelhouse. It was refreshing and rejuvenating and allowed fear to sort of creep back into my writing process, and that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Fear is a great antidote to complacency. Once a writer is sort of thinks he's figured out, he knows what he's doing, I think it's when you lose your edge as a writer. And you sort of think to yourself, how did I do it last time? And you write the same story over and over again and just change the names. It's not very fulfilling for your readers. It's certainly not really satisfying for you as a writer. So writing the Archer series in a brand new era uh, that I had to learn a lot about, but was fascinated with to begin with, was writing my real house. And I think it made the story even more compelling for me to write and hopefully for all of you to read. Thank you for watching and stay safe and keep reading. Take care. Goodbye for now.